DM Dungo here with another review, not from the DM's Guild. This time I'm looking at Roll20 specifically. I'm looking at the APIs that it offers for the pro users. I want to do a video on my top five favorite APIs. For all those people who are on the fence about whether or not to use the pro version of Roll20, or people who have the pro version, or might be just a little scared about what it offers and what it can do. So stay tuned. So my top five APIs for Roll20. I'm gonna start with a simple one. None of these are in any order or any specific like way of doing them. They're not in like, like they don't get better as they go along. I think they're more interesting as they go along, but this is one I use all the time and I kind of want to talk about it first because I think it's something that every game can benefit from. So the first thing I do is I go, okay, it's combat tracker. And what it does is it changes some of the things and behaviors of initiative in the Roll20 system. And I'll show you what exactly it does, but there's some really great features. So the first thing I do is you see the turn orders up and I select each token in turn and I go, okay, well, I need that one to have initiative and I need that one to have initiative and I need that one to have initiative and that one and that one. Now, some of what the API is doing here as well is it's looking in the character sheet of the token that it's linked to and saying, well, what's the initiative for this character and what's their uh, dex mod and what's their initiative bonus? And it's pulling that in and doing that kind of stuff. But that's not the bit that is important here. So now that they're all in, now that they're all in the turn order, I go, okay, uh, sort this by descending and it immediately locks onto the, the first person in the order and goes, okay, this person, he's up to go first. And then it also puts in in the, the chat window whose turn it is. And that person can click this done button and it immediately goes to the next person. And you can keep doing that as you go along. The other thing this does is it also tracks, if you look on this, what round it is. This is incredibly useful for things like if after X rounds something happens or you want to track things of that nature, it's really, really helpful for that. Um, the other thing it does is, if you've seen it moving the window around, it's actually focusing it on the current person's initiative. Now, the players don't necessarily see this; they just see um, the the um, they just see their turn pop up in the the chat window. But the DM does, and for running very large encounters with lots of enemies in it, this is a godsend and incredibly useful. Uh, you can you can even do things like group initiative, grab everything, all the tokens at once, and just go initiative, give me all of them, and it will do that for you. That's part of the strength of the API. But the combat tracker is incredibly helpful. I ran a 25 person encounter, and it was actually manageable because I didn't have to do like, did I forget that enemy? Did I forget this one? Did I make a mistake here? The other thing is, is because players are ending their own turns, you never forget them. You never make a, uh, oops, did I forget you? You were supposed to be this initiative. It's a lot of things that are very, very helpful. The next thing I wanna talk about is the Torch API. Now this one should seem fairly simple as to what it does, but it has a lot of features that make it really helpful. If you've ever had a token where you've gone, ah crap, and you've ever used dynamic lighting, you know one of the things you tend to forget is like, oh, I need to give person a torch. Well, that usually involves something like this. Open the token, go into the advanced tab, set the torch to the correct thing, which is that, um, and then all players see light, and clicking save changes. Bam, the character has light. You can see it kind of around this character. But that's kind of a bit of a faff, and you have to go in, in and out of things, and people lose torches, get torches, dark vision, all these kinds of things, and you have to play around with it. What Torch does is it allows you to create little macros that say, hey, I don't want to have to do this on my own. I can go, um, I can go okay, well, I want to create a dark vision macro, and it looks like this. Um, and it will basically go into the token and go, okay, say uh, this character has dark vision. Now he has dark vision. So if I control L to see what the character sees, I can now see that this character does have dark vision. Or if I want to go, well, this character has um, nothing. So he's going to have no light and he can see nothing now. Um, if I say, Ooh, maybe he's got a torch light, he's got a torch. This is a really easy way of adding and subtracting things like um, torches and um, lighting effects for different characters without having to open their tokens and out, and in and out. It makes it really simple. The other thing this does is it does allow you to do things like flickering. Now it's really tricky to get right, so I'm not gonna show it here, but it's just something that's an added feature on top of things um, because it tends to lag out um, weaker PCs. Um, there's some things like, uh, um, 
uh, like uh, performance things, performance tuning you need to do based on who is playing with your game at the same time. Now, this next one is really interesting and I really like it for a lot of different reasons. It's really useful for some very specific applications. And the API itself is called Patrol. And what it does is it allows you to create tokens that can patrol along a path so that they can do things like you can have patrolling guards or mon wandering monsters that are physically on the map and they move around and players can interact with them directly. Um, and I've got Lincoln Fizzpickle here, and I've got him on um, a map I did for uh, an adventure that I haven't finished a review for yet, uh, but will do soon. So whoever's, if, if you're watching this and you recognize some of the bits in this map, you might see what I'm trying to do. So if I scroll down and you look at these little glowing lights, you'll see that every so often they move on their own. There's nothing controlling from me, nothing I'm doing, and those paths are invisible to the users. They don't see them which is a really nice thing because these are supposed to be little glowing fish that move along this path. And there are four of them and they move in a semi-random way. Um, but you can do a lot of things with this. It's really interesting and really, really quite dynamic. It makes the players think, makes the players more engaged. It's a really great immersive tool in my opinion. And the thing is called Patrol. The next one I want to talk about is Wild Shape. And this one's particular is saved my ass and saved me so much time and it is worthwhile and it's worth its weight in gold if APIs have weight. Because code have weight, code have, does have weight. I guess they did figure out once when you put a fill a hard drive with something, it actually increased by weight by a small smidgen. So anyways, this is an incredibly powerful, useful tool. And I'll show you what it does. If you've ever had a Druid player, you know that they have wild shapes and they change into various animals. Or if you've had like bars and sorcerers and wizards who like to polymorph things into various things, usually chickens. Chickens is the thing they always want to use. I don't know why, but anyways, um, this is really helpful for that because it kind of goes, okay, well, I've got a character and they're a druid and they wild shape a lot, so I'm going to need them to go back and forth between forms. Well, I could create tokens for them. I could make them switch in and out based on which ones they are, but that's a lot of extra hassle. Well, this goes, okay, well, I want to all of a sudden be a hunter shark, and it goes, now, you're a hunter shark, or I want to go, um, maybe I want to be a giant healing for once, or maybe I want to be a giant constrictor snake. Or maybe I want to be uh, a polar bear for a bit. Um, and maybe, maybe I'll be a saber tooth tiger for a little. Uh, and then I need to go back to my form. All of that took a lot less clicking and a lot less thinking than it ordinarily would. And the best thing about this is if I go to giant toad version and I shift double left click this, it now opens the correct character sheet and the character can, the player can immediately use this as their stat blocks and everything is correct because it pulls these values these uh these extra values the million values in from the character sheet as part of that not as part of the api this is something i've set up separately but i've done it so that it will do that and they will match up correctly I, luckily i only have one druid character so they do match if you have two you'll need to create multiple versions of this but it still will save you so much time in the long run in terms of shifting them back and forth and all this sh this stuff Druid shift, really worth. The final one I want to show you is something called It's a Trap. And what this does is it allows you to set up traps within the world that the players don't see that can trigger on a whole bunch of conditions. And not just simple ones like, oh, do they, um, do they, they does their token run into it? You can do things like, does their passive perception trigger it? Do they see it? What's the DC needed? Does the true trap trigger? How much damage does it do? Is it a saving throw? All of this stuff combined together. And you can actually see it here. And what this is is set up such that the, the thing in the middle there, that bit there, that is where the trap actually physically is. The red line says, well, this, this red line, this red box, this is where the trap is can be triggered from. And then this bit here says, well, you can see the trap or at least be able to detect it from that point on. Now, Lorelai here, she's got a high passive perception. So all she needs to do is drop herself there and she located the trap, immediately popping it straight to the window and saying, hey, that's there. Let's let's deal with it that way. Now, if I take, if I take the trap and it's on the map layer and I put it back to the jam layer, that will rearm the trap. And if I take Atticus here and I move him into the same spot, he can't see the trap. His passive perception isn't high enough. He wanders into there though, and the trap triggers, he takes some damage. Uh, that kills him actually outright. <laughs> um, uh, but you see what I mean here. 
This is a really useful tool for if you're trying to design lots of traps, lots of places and areas where things are, and you, you don't want to have to try and remember what they all do and what the different conditions are and how what the passive perception thing is, because this is looking in the character sheets and going, what's their passive perception? Tell me if they see this. Now I might want to spread this little, um, this, this circle a bit wider, just so that it was easier for uh, Lorelai to detect it, so her token, if she moves it along, doesn't accidentally like she doesn't accidentally go too far and trigger it automatically um, but there it's a really useful tool visually even to say there's a trap there DM remember that um, be, just because it's a nice and easy way of doing it right so those are my top five for roll 20 apis now there are a lot more there's a lot more stuff out there's a lot of things that are really great um, area of effect is something that i've used a lot of to detect how big an area of effect is um, kaboom which is really interesting i haven't played around with that a lot um, there's some long rest macros you can build um, they're really interesting but there are a lot of things out there and they're not scary or hard to set up they're just a case of having the pro subscription, plopping them into your system. A lot of these are very, very easy. You just create a new script and pop them in. And some of them are so easy, they're actually part of the, uh, if you go to the API section in any game, you can just click one you want, combat trackers like that, um, a few others are like that, where you just click and say, I want combat tracker, and bop, it will automatically put it in. The setup and configuration for them are really simple. Um, Combat Tracker has actually a lot of extra features that I didn't touch on um, that are really kind of good because you can do things like auto roll initiative if you select all the tokens and, and you select, um, you, you open the initiative thing, it will automatically roll the initiatives for all those characters. But I like having characters roll initiative, they like doing it. It's like one of the weird things that they, they like to have player agency on that side of things. Um, but my, yeah, my top five are, are Combat Tracker, Torch Patrol, Druid Shift, and finally, It's a Trap. They're all great things to include in any Roll20 game, and I have them in almost every single one and use them in various ways. Um, Patrol is a really great one for immersion. Um, Torch with the flickering lights is really interesting. If you have enough players with powerful enough PCs in order to handle it, uh, I have a few people with some potato PCs that I have to be cognizant of. Um, but we still play and we still enjoy ourselves even without those features. So thank you. Please do remember to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. If you want to see more content like this, like this video because um, it lets me know that it's something worthwhile doing. Thank you. Peace out.